as the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Faber as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is your day for victory in Jesus. Good day to you, and I'm glad that you have tuned in to our program, Bringing to Light. We're going to get back into our series talking about preparing for revival. But before we do that, I just want to remind you, we have a service at Park West Church on Middlebrook, and this is every Tuesday night at 6.30. It's a time that we pray about many things that's going on in our government, prayer for each other, and if you ever need prayer, want a group that will lay hands on you and pray, you feel free to come. It is open to whoever wants to come and pray. We have a glorious time, and I'm so grateful for our intercessors. They are faithful. Faithful. They've learned so much and they're excited about the things of God. So I just want to say, feel free to come and visit. Now, Shantae has that special word for you today. So please, again, listen carefully as she shares with you. Hello, I'm Shantae Hawkman. There is no greater love than the love from our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We know in John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. In verse 17 it says that God did not come to condemn the world, but to come to love us and to give His life for us. We know in Romans in chapter 10 and verse 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess that you are saved. God wants you to give your life to him today. He loves you so much, and there is nothing like knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord. He will give you that peace and that joy in your heart that you need, and it's, it promises us that He will give us eternal life. And we know in Ephesians, it says, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God. It's nothing that we can do in ourselves and who we are, but this is a gift that God has given to us, that we can have eternal life. And it's by His grace and His love. Please Pray a prayer with me today and ask Jesus to be your Lord and to be your Savior. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And Father, I come and I ask you to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I ask you to cleanse me and purify me from all sin. I ask you to forgive me for anything, all that I have done. And Lord, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We'll praise the Lord. We know in verse 13 of Romans 9, it says, call upon the Lord and you will be saved. So as you have called upon the Lord today, I believe that you have received Jesus and you have, saved, you have been saved and that you will spend eternity in heaven with me. Well, praise the Lord. Please call or write to us and let us know what God has done for you today. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. I hope you have your Bibles as always. We're going to be looking at the passages in Isaiah 35. We, uh, again, we're talking about preparing for revival. We've got to first believe that it's God's will for there to be a revival, and I believe that with all of my heart. We look back, we read about the many revivals that's gone on in the past, and I love reading them. I love to see how people would come from near and far and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior when they had just been such heathens, you know, or, or to, to hear about the miracles that, that went on during that time. I love reading about that, and I'll just go ahead and share one with you that's on my heart right now. But if you've ever read any after Maria Wood with uh, Adder, I highly recommend her, her books, her things that she's got out. It You will just be thrilled to see what revival can entail. But one day she was preaching in front of a lot of people and she'd put her finger up and all at once it's like she didn't move. 
and she st she stood like that for a few days and it was it was such a sign and a wonder that people would go by and just look at her she, i mean she was just not even moving and just it was almost like she was paralyzed but her eyes was open her fingers up and she stands like that all that time well that's a sign you know that that is a wonder if you will that god did but people knew that so for her to stand that long it's not like she got weak and fell or any of those kinds of things so i don't know what all is god is going to do in this last day revival but i can assure you it's going to be awesome but do we believe that do we desire that do we hunger for that that let's make that a matter of prayer let's see what the word of god says about a last day revival that let us get our house in order if you will i want to make sure my life is pure and holy before the lord now i'm going to say something else here i believe in grace as much as anybody we the bible says we are saved by grace and we use that word grace and we'll think, well, that's unmerited favor. It's the favor of the Lord. We didn't deserve it, but God loved us. So we extended grace towards us. That's good. But in those same passages in Ephesians, it said that now that we have been saved, we are created unto good works. You see, a lot of people want to say, well, you know, Jesus has already done it all. There is nothing else for me to do. He paved the way. He paid for my way. But, you know, I just really don't have to do any of that. Besides, we pay the pastor to do that, or we pay this one to do that. But, you know, every one of us, as children of God, we are a member in the body of Christ just suppose that my index finger decided it wasn't going to do anything. You know, the rest of the fingers can do it. Well, you know, that's going to be awkward for everything about my hand, especially when I'm having to pick up things with these fingers because the index finger has decided I don't want to function. I don't want to do anything. Everybody else can do it. Well, you see, again, we are born into the body of Christ. We all have a function. We all have a purpose. Are we walking out what God has called us to do? Or do we want to make excuses and pull back from what God is saying to him? Well, you know, I have the grace of God. He will forgive me. Where I, yes, he will forgive us. But our God also sees the heart. Is the heart ready to obey what God says? Will I give what to myself to the Lord? You see, we that are Christians, we're not our own. The Bible says we're bought with a price. It took the blood of God to purchase our salvation. But now I'm created unto good works. Every one of us need to be doing something in the kingdom of God. Now, we alluded to this on our last program in Isaiah 35. But the first verse says, The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing the glory of lebanon shall be given unto it the excellency of carmel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord and the excellency of our god notice they shall see the glory of the lord now ultimately when jesus comes back to take his church home he's going to come the scripture says on clouds and we know that he's going to come in his glory and then you and me, the Bible says that our bodies will be changed. It will be the twinkle of an eye. That's how quick it's going to happen. And then up we go, we're out of here. And what a glorious day that's going to be. But I do believe that the church is going to begin to see the manifestations of God. We're going to begin to see His glory. I have mentioned this before, and I will mention it again here. But, you know, one thing that we're seeing God do in the land he is allowing this oil to flow through a Bible. And, uh, you know, I had to go and see this for myself. But sure enough, we saw this Bible. And it happened to be the, uh, one of the men's Bibles. And he and a group of people had been in intercession. They had been praying. And God had just laid upon their heart of the things, the glorious things that God wants to do in these last days. So, so they were interceding, praying. And all at once, this man's body, uh, Bible, began to show oil inside of it. 
And as he looked, he thought maybe his granddaughter had spilt something on his Bible. But come to find out, the granddaughter had not been there. And this oil began moving throughout the Bible. And before long, the Bible was saturated, but yet where he had made notes, nothing was bleeding through the pages, nothing was distorted. The oil kept flowing. It got back to the map section. And over Israel, there was a perfect heart that was upon Israel with all the oil everywhere else. Now that's a sign and that's a wonder, a heart. And you know, we, we look at hearts as meaning love. But you see, they put this Bible in this big plastic container. And after a while, you know, the oil would start filling up. Well, they started putting the oil in little vials and giving it to individuals. And they would anoint each other with the oil or the people in the church. And people were getting healed. They're getting healed even now. I understand they have a special service uh, every Tuesday morning. And you might want to check that out. But I want you to know that's not the only Bible that has it's, it's got the oil flowing from. But we went to another service where there was a different Bible. And, you know, he would hold that Bible over our heads and the oil would come out of the Bible just supernaturally. So glorious things, signs and wonders and miracles are taking place. I don't know what else God is going to do, but I know I recently heard a prophetic word that we're going to begin to see the manifestations of God in Washington, D.C. It specifically men mentioned the monument of Lincoln. It mentioned some other, the Washington monument. There are things that's taken place, but let me tell you, the best is yet to come. Even though I believe there are things that God wants to do, sometimes we sit back and we think, well, if God wanted to do them, He would just do them. But that is not true. It is God's will that all be saved. But you see, sometimes we're going to have to be a people that intercede for the lost. We're going to have to come against the demonic forces that's blinding people's eyes to keep them from seeing truth. You and I play a big part in allowing God to move into the earth like He really wants to, but He's looking to you and me to do our part. The same thing that we're looking at, praying for revival and preparing for revival. So we know prayer is going to be very important for revival to come. Now, with that in mind, we look at uh, the third verse. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Strengthen ye the weak hands. You see, how do I become strong? I can't become strong in the Lord. It's not looking at my strength or even my ability. It's looking to His strength and His ability. I don't know how many times a day I might say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because I may feel like physically I can't do it. There's so much going on in my mind. I can't do it. But there's something about declaring that little simple verse that God's power begins to come and to move and helps me to be who I need to be in that particular time. But it will work for you as well. So strengthen you the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, have you ever seen any more fear than you see today? So many people are afraid of so many things. You know, they can watch the news and they can hear about those that have these bombs. They can see the hatred uh, in nations against America. You know, we begin to think, are we prepared? Are we ready? Are we going to be okay? And you know, if you start looking at man and what man can do and what man can't do, fear can easily move into our lives. And, you know, I think of Job. He said, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. But a lot of times the enemy is roaring like a lion trying to get us to be afraid. He wants us to get our eyes off of Jesus. He wants us to look at the storms in life. And just as Peter began to sink when he began to realize he was walking on the water and the storm was raging, the waves around his legs, the sound of the thunder that I'm sure echoed across those waters. So you see, he began to sink. But smart Peter cried out, Lord, help me, save me. You know, and Jesus was right there to pull him out of the waves. So I want you to know we must realize the enemy is roaring like a lion. 
We can become so paranoid and so fearful that we won't even get out of our houses. We're afraid we're going to catch some kind of disease, and we see that, new diseases that are coming about. But I cannot allow myself to get in fear because if I do, Scripture talks about drawing back into perdition or to da- uh, to, into danger. But I need to press forward and do what God has called me to do. Whatever He calls you and me to do, He will equip us to do it. But notice, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, and I'm saying this to you, I'm saying this to me, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. You see, a lot of times people are doing this wrong, and maybe sometimes on the job, because we're Christian, we sense the opposition where we have the light of Jesus inside, but darkness is trying to come against us. You forgive, you pray for them, and God knows how to deal with their hearts. I've seen God deal with hearts. They would be uh, repenting. They would come back, say, I'm sorry. Or if things start going crazy in their lives, they know who to call them uh, to pray for them. It's not going to be the one out here that was laughing at the dirty jokes that was being told. They're not going to go to them for prayer. They're going to come to somebody like you. So don't just think, well, you know, they hate me. It's never going to be any different. I probably just need to quit this job. And start. you know, if God tells you to quit the job, Stop it. Stop the job, and God will give you another one. But a lot of times we're running from situations when God has placed us there to be a light to those that are in darkness. I worked at a company, and I could call it right now, and every one of you would know where it is. But I tell you, I worked with a lot of darkness. A lot of people came against me on that job. Why? Because I didn't mind sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. When certain ones wanted to tell their dirty jokes, I knew what the joke would be. I wouldn't even go around. So I was definitely different than a lot of those people. But you know, I I just said it it would have been almost funny to have had a video of the different ones in the group that would come around to me and ask me to pray for them. And you know, my mind would say, you're the one that laughed with them about me and my stand for Christ. But I didn't do that. If they came to me for prayer, I prayed for them. And you know, I'd hear good reports, you know, God did this. Thank you so much for praying. But those that want to continue in their evil against you, God says, I will vindicate you. I will deal with their hearts. God didn't tell you to vindicate yourself. He didn't tell me to vindicate myself, which there's been many times I've wanted to. But you see, we forgive and we pray. What's the scripture say? Pray for those who despitefully use you. I forgive them because if I don't or you don't, God says, I cannot forgive you of your sin. Do you realize how dangerous that is? Because if I regard iniquity or sin in my heart, God says, I don't even hear your prayer. The only prayer that he would hear is a confession of sin to Jesus Christ. And he's faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. So let us pray for those individuals. I have a friend right now and somebody has done her in a terrible way. And it's ended up costing my friend a lot of money just because she was angry. But I want you to know we just kept praying and praying. And, of course, my friend was forgiving many times a day. But I want you to know that person ended up coming to my friend and said, I have done you wrong, and I ask you to forgive me. Let me tell you, nothing is impossible with God. And nobody might be praying for their salvation but you. So don't just lay down to the attack that may be coming your way. But again, be quick to forgive and to pray and intercede for them. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Well, you know, we see this happening in the ministry of Jesus. And a lot of people think that's only applying to that. I think it is applying to not only the days of Jesus and then the disciples in the early church. We can read about those things in the book of Acts, the glorious things that God did through them. But I do believe that it's going to be a time of the miraculous. Again, the latter rain being greater than the former. 
Uh, all of the word of God that has been preached that has not produced a harvest yet, if you can imagine with me, the Lord pouring out of his spirit upon the word that has been preached. You talking about a harvest. I can't even imagine the harvest that's going to happen during those days. This is when I believe we will see the multitudes flow into Zion. I believe this will be just when Jesus was here and they heard about the miracles that he did. They went to go out and listen to what he had to say because these good glorious things were happening. When we begin to minister in Jesus' name, we will know that it's by His power and His authority that these things are taking place. And I believe that's when people are going to take notice. This is wrought. This is done in the name of Jesus. I want to know more about Him. I want to experience Him. I want Him to touch my family. I want Him to minister here or there. See, I believe this is the season for those things to happen. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. And it says, And the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And that's exactly the vision that I had. A desert place. The ground dry and parched. But all at once the waters begin to come through the cracks in the ground. And it became deeper and deeper still to the Lord God called it a river. There is a river that is flowing, but I believe the manifestation of the river, the flow of God, the moving of God is going to be seen and known by mankind. And I believe in that there is going to be the convicting power of the Spirit of God that people are going to realize that they're in sin. I know the word that I recently heard. He said, prepare the altars. Prepare the altars. And we know there was a time in Scripture where the altars may be broken down and they would be called upon to repair the altars. So once again, they could offer their sacrifices. Well, I want you to know there is the sacrifice of praise and worship. There is the sacrifice of intercession. There is the sacrifice, the altar, where we come and we begin to confess our sins to Jesus. And my question was to God for me, I said, Lord, how do I prepare the altars? I am privileged. I, I get to lead, if you will, the altar team. And so this is very important to me. God, how do I prepare the altars? And I think one thing is to encourage people to walk in holiness. Are we holy as God is holy? You know, Scripture says that without holiness, we will not see the Lord. I don't know about you, but that's like, wow then I need to be holy. Well, you see, I am not Jesus in the sense that I'm holy as he was. He never sinned. He never came short of the glory of God. You have sinned and so have I. But as I come to the Lord and I say, Jesus, afresh and anew, and I do this daily, wash me in your blood, cleanse me from all unholiness. I present my body unto you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is my reasonable service. I am giving myself to the Lord. We are not our own. We've been bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as I give him myself, I say, Lord, thank you for washing me in your blood and removing my sin as far as, as the east is from the west. Okay, at that point, all of my sins are forgiven. I didn't say it was perfect. All of my sins are forgiven. I often then say, Lord, I did this this morning. Now fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Fill me, God, till I overflow with you. And I love this prayer. And Lord, let your love be shed abroad in my heart. And I even pray, God, broaden the tents of my heart that I house more love, your love, love that covers a multitude of sin. Not shine the light on it and expose somebody's sin, but that I will forgive as you have forgiven me. I've been reminded a lot late, lately. You know, God, sometimes people do disappoint me. Uh, sometimes people pretend to be one thing and you realize there's something totally different. But you know, when we think about God's love, He loved me even in my sin. He never stops loving you or stops loving me. He loves us unconditionally. 
You know, I love my four children. I love their families. Sometimes I can get a little frustrated at something they do or they don't do, but you know what? I love them still yet. I love them the same. And you that have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I would encourage you, don't get discouraged. Don't lay down and feel like nothing's happening, nothing is working. I want you to know that God is working. But how important that it is for you and me to pray, to pray and believe God to move again in America like we've seen Him move so many times before. He loves us. He loves us unconditionally. So I pray, God, give me the wisdom. Give me the discernment. Let me love with your love, Lord. Let me be quick to forgive and help me, God, when my feelings feel sad or downtrodden, that I will rise up in authority and power. That's all the time we have today. We're going to be back next week, the Lord willing. Until then, may God bless you, and I love you. I love you all. Hello, I am Shantae Hawkman. Are you in an area in your life where you need a healing or a touch from the Lord? God wants to touch your body or to just even touch you emotionally and give you His peace that passes all understanding. We know that the Bible gives us many promises of God's healing power. In Isaiah 53, in verse 4, it says, Surely He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. I believe that God wants to touch you today in a mighty way. We believe in God's word and in his promises. And I feel that we can just hold fast to his promises every day and to speak his word. I know that when my little boy was sick, that I just spoke the word over him and I said, Micah, you will live and not die and you will declare the works of the Lord. And I know that the word says that Jesus, he sent his word and Jesus is the word. God sent his word to heal all of, our, of us from our sicknesses and diseases. Can I pray with you today that God will touch your body wherever you are. It, the promise says that he will bring us peace. And it says that God he even bore the grief and the sorrow that you may have today. That God wants to touch you mentally, physically, spiritually in every way. But let's pray. Father, we just come to you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for my brother and my sister today. Father, wherever they are, God, you know their need. And Father, I'm asking of you to touch their bodies. Lord, to minister peace and joy and strength to their hearts today. Father, I thank you for a healing in their bodies that we can just hold fast to your promises that by Jesus' stripes we are healed and we are whole. And Father, we thank you for your healing in my brother and sister today. Father, just touch their bodies by your power and by your might. And Father, we thank you for it that they are healed and they are whole. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We'll praise God. Please write to us or call and let us know what God has done for you today. And I'm believing and I stand fast in prayer for your healing and from a touch from the Lord. Amen.